everybody, this is your Digital Super Saiyan 3 back here with another video, and it's time. It's time. It's time. It's Empire time. It's time for me to do the review of Star Wars Episode 5, The Empire Strikes Back. So let's get into The Empire Strikes Back. So... The Rebels, after their victory from the last movie, they were driven from their secret base by the Empire and being pursued all the way across the galaxy. They are now... They now have a base on the icy world of Hoth. Determined to find the Rebels, v Darth Vader, played by James Earl Jones, dispatches many Imperial probe droids to scour the galaxy in order to find the Rebels. One of the probes crash land on the Hoth, on the Hoth system. Luke Skywalker, yet again played by Mark Hamill, spots a crap spots the crash, and attempts to go and investigate it, until he is then captured by a ferocious snow monster called a Wampa. The Wampa captures Luke and takes him to his lair. Meanwhile, back at the Echo Base, Han Solo, played by Harrison Ford, yet again played by Harrison Ford, attempts to leave, knowing that he has a debt he's got to pay to, a debt he's got to pay off to Jabba the Hutt. Han attempts to leave, but Leia says, Han, wait. Leia, yet again played by the late great Carrie Fisher, tries to convince Han to stay, but Han's, Han talks about how Leia's such a flirter, you know, and... And Leia's like, I don't know what you're talking about. And Han says, I know you got feelings for me, being a wise ass he is. However, Han discovers that Luke hasn't come back yet. And knowing that a blizzard is come and knowing that a blizzard is happening, Han takes decides to take his Tauntaun to go out and look for Luke. Be meanwhile, back at the Wampa's lair. Luke comes to and manages to use the Force for the first time while he's trying to get his lightsaber out of the snow to cut him free while he's hanging upside down from the Wampa's icy trappings. Luke cuts himself free and then disarms the Wampa when the Wampa attempts to attack Luke. Luke manages to escape and collapse in the snow. until he finally sees the ghost of Obi-Wan Kenobi, or Old Ben, played by Alec Guinness. The ghost of, the ghost of Old Ben tells Luke that he, must, that he must continue his training by going to the Dagobah system, where he will learn from Yoda, the Jedi that instructed him. The ghost of Old Ben disappeared, and then Han arrived on his Tauntaun. Dead exhausted, the Tauntaun exhausted collapsed. And basically, in order to keep Luke safe, or to keep Luke Skywalker from freezing to death, Han cuts open the Tauntaun with Luke's lightsaber and sticks Luke's head inside the Tauntaun's guts. And Han's like, and I thought they smelled bad on the outside. The next morning, the rebels, the rebels, the rebels managed to locate Han and Luke, and they brought them back to the Echo Base, where Luke is, where Luke gets medical, medical attention really quickly. But, 
Trouble was not far behind. Trouble was soon coming as the Empire had finally learned the whereabouts of the rebels. and they deployed their fleet heading towards the Hoth system. Knowing that the, knowing that the Empire is preparing, preparing an all-out assault, the rebels make way to try to evacuate from their, from their icy, from their icy fortress or their icy base on the Hoth system. Of course, before the Empire can begin their assault, Darth Vader kills off one of kills off one of his kills off one of his henchmen by force choking them through the TV. <laughs> After saying you have failed me for the last time, Admiral, and named a new Admiral. Just like that. Yeah. Vader kills another henchman later on in this movie, so. I won't get into much of this. The rebels began to make a stand against the Empire and began and begin loading their transports to make sure many get off the planet. The Empire for their big it's their big ground assault. They have Imperial walkers. These giant mechanized camel things come down onto the surface of the planet and begin their all-out assault, and the huge battle ensued. The rebels began to give their counterattack against the Empire's giant mechanical walkers. Of course, despite the fight the rebels put up, they are no match for the walkers as they are being driven back and driven out of their fortress. Of course, they knew they weren't going to win. The rebels knew they weren't going to win this t They weren't going to win the day. As the evacuation through the Echo Base, you see Han trying to get Leia out of the command center, knowing that, knowing that he wasn't going to get Leia on the transport, Han decides to get Leia on the Falcon with Chewbacca and C-3PO. The four of them make their escape off of the Hoth system in the Millennium Falcon while being chased by the TIE Fighters and Star Destroyers of the Empire. Meanwhile, Luke gets into his X-Wing with R2-D2 and the two begin to make make their way to the Dagobah system after Luke tells R2 we're not going to be meeting up with the others. We're going to the Dagobah system. The chase was on as the Millennium Falcon is being pursued by the TIE Fighters. So, with unable to get the Falcon into light speed, Han Solo decides to navigate the Falcon into an asteroid field with the TIE Fighters on the crew's tail. Han manages to take shelter within a... Han manages to use... to take the Falcon into a crater. But we know they aren't going to be there for long. While on the Dagobah system, Luke Skywalker crash lands onto Dagobah, and we learn that it's a swamp planet. It's dark, danky, and, well, looks like any other swamp you might see. And, of course, Luke's, Luke's X-Wing begins to sink right into the swamp. Soon enough, Luke, Luke and R2 meet a strange little green man, which we soon learn is actually Master Yoda, 
who was actually putting on a facade for the group. And we learn that he actually is a wise Jedi Master after all. Yoda and Yoda and Obi Wan begin. Yoda begins to make contact with the ghost of of Obi Wan, and Yoda says he is too old to begin training. And Luke basically says, "I'm ready for the trial. I learned so much." And and Luke says, "I'm not afraid." And then Yoda says, "You will be." And soon, the training began. And Luke begins to train under Yoda. As Yoda is picking up right where, where Obi-Wan left off. We see Luke run through the swamps of Dagobah with Yoda on his back. However, it isn't an easy task, especially when Luke later ran into a cave where Yoda tells him only what you take with you as, as Luke basically says what's in there after Luke asked what was in there. Yoda tells Luke that he will not need his weapons. But Luke takes his weapons with him anyway. Inside the cave, Luke sees a silhouette of Darth Vader, and the two begin to fight. Luke defeats the silhouette of Vader after decapitating it. And then... The head of Vader exploded, only to reveal Luke's own face underneath the mask. I mean, yes, this actually tapped into Luke's fear. Meanwhile, on board the Millennium Falcon, the crew, while still in the strange while still in the strange crater, realizes something is not quite right with this cave. And also Leia and Han begin to hit it off. So, yeah, there are these strange creatures that were on top of the Falcon while our crew was working on fixing the Falcon. But they come to realize that the cave they are in was no cave. It indeed was a giant creature of its own right. Our group managed to escape from the jaw of the creature, and managed to get themselves out of the asteroid field. Meanwhile, Darth Vader comes in contact with his master, Emperor Palpatine, a.k.a. Darth Sidious, a.k.a. just the Emperor. Basically, the Emperor tells Darth Vader that we have a new enemy, that this child, the pilot who destroyed the Death Star, is the offspring of Anakin Skywalker. And the Force is strong with him. Vader says if he can be turned. Then do it, says Palpatine. If he cannot be turned, he shall be destroyed. If he cannot be turned, he shall be destroyed. Consider it done. So, Vader then hires bounty hunters to go and locate the Millennium Falcon, saying that there will be a substantial reward for anyone who brings, who brings him the Millennium Falcon, who locates the Millennium Falcon. You can, you, you can feel free to use any methods necessary, but I want them alive. No disintegration. As Vader tells that to Boba Fett. Oh, hello again. Since the last time we saw Boba Fett, 
in these reviews, or I forgot to talk about him, he was in Attack of the Clones as a kid, and now he's grown up since this takes place many, many, many years after the events of Attack of the Clones. <sighs> so, our heroes manage... Our heroes are then pursued by a type or are pursued by a Star Destroyer who is opening fire on the Millennium Falcon. Of course, mani managing to escape by the skin of our to, by the skin of their teeth, Han took refuge used his docking clamp to take to basically clamp onto the to the Star Destroyer and decides to float out with the rest of the garbage. Han realizes that the only place safe for him and his friends is the is the world of Bespin, a planet in the sky. So Han begins to make Han Han begins to take our take the crew to the world of Bespin as Han, C3PO, and Princess Leia begin to make their way to the world of Bespin, home of Han Solo's best friend, Lando Calrissian, played by Billy D. Williams. Yeah, this was Billy D. Williams' first appearance as Lando Calrissian. Meanwhile, back on Dagobah, Luke basically begins to have a vision, realizing that his friends are in trouble. And, of course... He also fails miserably at trying to get trying to get his X-wing out of the swamp, but Yoda shows off his incredible force skills by picking up the X-wing out of the moat and getting it out of the sinking swamp. But yep, Vader or shall I say, but Yoda and Obi-Wan try to plead with Luke not to go after Luke realizes that his friends are in trouble. However, Luke says, I just can't let Han and Leia die. So he goes off to Bespin. At Bespin, Han, Leia, C-3PO, and Chewbacca make their way to Cloud City, the city in the sky on the world of Bespin where they meet up with Han's old friend, Lando Calrissian. Lando has a friendly demeanor about him, but something seems off as Leia does not trust him right away. Because, of course, Leia is right, and Han says, well, he's still my friend, though. Of course, they, lear are cr they soon learn they were set up by Lando, because... Lando tells them that the Empire got here first. And the Empire says, we'll be honored if you would join us. As Darth Vader said that as our friends are, as our heroes walked into Vader's trap. On Cloud City, Lando tells soon tells our our heroes that that the trap that they were just a bait and that this whole trap had been for Luke's that had been mostly for Luke. So. Vader begins to Vader begins to prep the carbon freeze the carbon freeze chamber on on Cloud City and says we will test this on Captain Solo. And yes, I forgot to mention Boba Fett is alongside Vader. We will test it on Captain Solo. 
So, Han is taken to the carbon freeze chamber, where he will be put into a carbon freeze. Han, before he goes into the, before he gets frozen, says, well, well, actually, Leia, pro pro Leia confesses her love to Han, and Han says, I know. And then we see Han get frozen in carbonite. Soon after, Vader says, Calrissian, take the princess and the Wookiee to my ship. However, Lando replies, you said they'd be left into this you said they'd be left in the city under my supervision. I am altering the deal. Pray I don't alter it any further. Of course, they were just about to do that. Luke just arrived on Bespin and Le and Luke sees Leia and Leia says to him it's a trap, Luke. It's a trap. Of course, Luke goes into the room and up into up into a trap door that leads him upwards into the carbon freeze chamber where he encounters Vader. And the two begin to fight. And this was what it was building to. Luke and Vader, one on one, this was personal. And throughout this entire fight, you see Vader just toy with Luke. He is actually toying with our young hero. Our young hero puts up a valiant fight against Vader. But Vader, being the more experienced of the two, we knew he was going to have the upper hand on our boy Luke. Because it was going to take more than just what we saw with Yoda for... Luke to beat a more trained Vader. The fight the fight escalated onto a catwalk. After Vader demonstrated how well rounded he is in the force against Luke, even knocking Luke out of a window, where Luke managed to catch himself onto that catwalk. As the fight continued on, Vader sliced off Luke's right arm. And then tells Luke, don't make me destroy you. And tries to get Luke to join him. Luke says, I'll never join you. And Vader responds by saying, if you only knew the power of the dark side, Obi-Wan never told you what happened to your father. And then Luke says, he told me enough. He told me you killed him. Then Vader reveals a big surprise for Luke, saying, No, I am your father. Luke, shocked and distraught, says, No, that's not true. That's impossible. And then Vader says, Search your feelings. You know it to be true. Well, meanwhile, while our heroes are on, while Leia, Chewie, and C three P and a dismantled C three P O, which I forgot, C three P O got dismantled by a bunch of Ugnots, which are these little pig people. Yeah, they were about to be taken to Vader's ship, but thanks to Lando Calrissian's cleverness. He basically manages to save our heroes, but of course, automatically, Leia and Chewie don't trust Lando, but Lando tells Leia and Chewie there's still a chance to save Han, as they race all the way across Bespin to, to basically rescue Han from the bounty hunter. Boba Fett tells the stormtroopers to load Captain Solo into the cargo hold. <clears throat> of course they do and the slave one begins to take off 
not with our hero, but our heroes begin to shoot at Boba Fett's ship trying to stop him. However, Boba Fett takes Han to to uh, Jabba the begins to take Han to Jabba the Hutt. Our heroes then had to make an escape on their own right, having to deal with the stormtroopers chasing them across Cloud City. Luke managed to get away from Vader after he lost his arm. He jumped from the Luke jumped and landed and landed right through a small a small hole. Of course, a trap door opened up through the tunnel that Luke was in, and Luke managed to catch himself onto this antenna, making contact with Leia using the force by saying, Leia, hear me, while being beaten down and exhausted. Leia says, we have to go back, while the TIE fighters are on their tail. Our heroes do go back for Luke and manage to escape with him. But the Empire was still on their heels and trying to get away from them was all that mattered. R2 manages to fix the hyperdrive after realizing that the hyperdrive, which got fixed, was deactivated by the Empire. Thanks to R2-D2's thinking, our heroes manage to get some light speed and escape. Vader, who just stood there dead silent on his on his Star Destroyer, just walks off. Our heroes then rendezvous with the rest of the Rebellion. Lando Calrissian, who's now their ally, basically tells our heroes that we'll find Jabba the Hutt in this bounty hunter and bring Han back. And Luke says, okay, we'll rendezvous, we'll rendezvous with you on Tatooine. And tells them, may the force be with you. Of course, this scene is pretty weird as you're seeing Lando Calrissian wearing Han's clothes. So then the Millennium Falcon takes off. Luke gets himself a new robotic hand. And our heroes look out into the distance of space. So ends the Empire Strikes Back. Final thoughts, this definitely was the best of the original trilogy, and definitely it shows. Many people say Empire was probably the best Star Wars movie of all time. I still say it's one of my favorites. Is it my all-time favorite? Definitely not. That honor goes to Revenge of the Sith. But I still love The Empire Strikes Back. So in the end, happy 40th, Empire, and may the Force be with you. Stick around as the next time I review Return of the Jedi. Until then, see ya!